it's going down, ayy Send a bottle of John, but sit at your table and pass it around, ayy This is a hit, I got Sarko there back on the mound I used to ride on them bus, then I got it bustin', just look at me now, yeah. I feel like the man when I'm in that crowd, we they runnin' the town Osu was handin', Joe Lou was craggin', Nima was braggin' I might pull up in Burma with all of the sticks, you think I was campin' Me and them died in the M.6, we speeded, we mashin', yeah Smell like well, she like my fragrance. You're tuned into the All Star Game. I officially welcome you to the next episode. In this episode, we are going to be connecting the diaspora to Ghana, and I have three top minds in the studio with me. I have the face of Team Ghana, Kwesi Abomako. I have Irene Nigo. I have Antoine Menza, who's a big, big, big media personality in Ghana. Right away from this breather, when we get back, we're going to go straight into connecting the diaspora to Ghana. Stay tuned. My fashion, international calls to all of my dogs that's locked on the yard. They behind bars, living through my bars. They just wanna see me shine, I'm a star. I got brothers wanna see me a dead man. I feel like Mufasa and Scar. You look like you ain't been getting no bread, man. You niggas been counting your carbs. I've been eating now, but I had to start. Money vanished like I saw a mirage. I was down bad, dabbing a fraud. Selling pounds and cracking them cards. Welcome back to the All Star Game Show. And like I mentioned earlier on, we're going to be talking about connecting the diaspora to Ghana. And when we talk about the diaspora in Ghana, the first thing that comes to mind is the year of return. PK, what is your, your, your general intake on the year of return, the policy and everything about it? Um, I think that is a great initiative the government put together okay. to be able to connect the Ghanaian diaspora to Ghana, um, just to be able to know their roots mm -hmm. and connect with resident Ghanaians to be able to work on collaborative um, project, project together yeah. and just network basically That's and okay. um, I think that is a great initiative the government put together we um, as Ghanaians resident Ghanaians mm -hmm. are in a position to take advantage of that That's true. Um, and That's true. broaden our scope when it comes to the kind of people we meet the kind of people um, we get into businesses with and everything so it's just more opportunities for okay. us so I think okay. it's, it's great. Great, great so with the tall list of events that happened in 2019 Irene obviously you are from the diaspora there's been some advantages and disadvantages so run us through some of the advantages the things that you, you are happy happen and then some of the things that you were not too excited about um, I would say overall, the Year of Return initiative was amazing. It was like a warm welcome to diaspora all around the world, whether you're Ghanaian or not, to course, come back yeah. and just come visit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a long business plan. You don't mm -hmm. have to know exactly what you want to do, but just mm -hmm. come and see. Um, I always say like it felt like a black family reunion. Okay. Uh -huh. um, it was nice to see people who look like us from all walks of life mm -hmm. just loving on each other and just like appreciating each other. People okay. were so happy to feel connected to their roots. Some have never touched the motherland before. Yeah, so they okay. were so excited and it was a great experience. Um, I would say that was an advantage. Um, the disadvantages, I think, are some of like the infrastructure wasn't ready okay. as far as like the roads, mm. um, the traffic was <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that also there's a lot of people who were wanted to know what next mm. and there was no like blueprint for what yeah. they could do next, yeah. like how they can get involved. Um, I think with time that has developed as far as like how to start a business and all of that, getting some um, consulting on that. But I feel like initially people were like, okay, I had fun, now what? Mm, yeah, and yeah. it was like still open. Yeah. In as much as we were having fun during that time, there were some misconceptions going on. People were not too certain about some things. Antoine, can you tell us like a little about the misconceptions that people had during, during the whole year of return noise and everything? I mean, like you said, overall it was positive. The fun was great. You know, people latched on to, to the vibe. It created opportunities. Uh -huh. But you had a few people that... You know, here and there would complain. One of the things were, you know, was about the fuss. Like, why are we making such a fuss about it? Yeah. You know, these guys have been there for a long time. Exactly. They've heard of Ghana <laughs> before, you know? Um, so, so why now, you know? Um, some people also felt they were taking advantage and some people weren't ready to pay for certain services mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, in coming down, I guess people from diaspora told a lot, you know, mm -hmm. some, some true, some, some false, yes, like, hey, they'll yeah. try and take advantage of you. Yeah. You go from here exactly. to here, the taxi driver says, it's 30, this is line, it's 10, yeah. you know, so, 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 you know, those kind of, those situations. But so what do you think could have been done better in terms of organization, security and all that? What was, what's your take on that as well? What could have been done better? Um, well, I, do, I don't think we anticipated the crowd and the traction that okay. came in. But, but if, if we had to some extent, then of course the traffic situation could have been better to an extent. Um, but I do think, you know, the right services like Uber and, and, and Bolt came at the right time, you know, because th that culture of, of, you know, getting the, the ride straight from mm -hmm. your app is something that, you know, people from Daspa are already used yeah. to. 
Um, so that was a positive. But definitely the traffic situation, accommodation, you know, Airbnb started popping up around that time as well. Yeah. So that eventually yeah. helped. Yeah. Um, but but just, you know, letting people understand the opportunities and, and yeah. getting them ready to you know, fully mm-hmm. grasp and yeah. take advantage yeah. of it was, yeah. was slow. Great. We know, we know the situation of the economy in Ghana. Right. What, is, what, what is your take on... on um, what is your take on the impact of the diaspora on the economy on Ghana and all? We know the situation the economy yeah. is and Do you think it's, it's promising? Do you think the impact of the diaspora on the Ghanaian economy is promising or we are, we are still going to be in the same place that we find ourselves in, in years to come? Um, I think that, yeah, obviously there's foreign exchange. Yeah. They're bringing foreign currencies into the country and that's going to definitely help the economy. Um, from the lady selling beans on the Oxford Street yeah. to whatever posh hotels, yeah, whatever true. posh restaurants, Everybody's everybody... Busy is going to make some good money yeah, just because yeah. there's people coming into the country and patronizing these these products and services. So I think that the year of return definitely helped the economy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't really mention as to like statistics, yeah. but I can definitely say based on what I saw yeah. that it definitely helped the economy. Yeah. yeah. Irene, are, are you a resident in Ghana? I or, am. Or you are thinking of relocating? What are the pros and cons, <laughs> of, what are the pros and cons of relocating to Ghana? I mean, what would you say to somebody who, who's wanting to come to Ghana? What would you tell the person? Uh, um, so I actually came for with the year of return. Um, my, one of my best friends and I planned a group with um, that came, about 15 of us, and they loved it. Um, I was supposed to leave. I stayed and they left and I stayed and I was supposed to leave in March and like the day before my flight, they closed the border. So wow. I got to stand here. Um, and then, because I was still deciding, you know, am I going to make the big move? I'm going to come back and forth for a bit and then figure it out. And then I got stranded here. And mm. then they opened the borders in September. And I like to say I was stranded by choice at that point. Because, yeah. like, I decided to stay. Mm. I was like, I think I can, you know, I can manage this. Um, so I would say that um, I would say that it was a great experience. I think what happened to me was divine. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people would have had yeah. that experience. Yeah. Um, so now when they ask me, like, I want to move to Ghana. I'm ready to do it. I'm saying... Why do you want to move to Ghana? My job is not to tell you to come. My job is to ask you why you want to come so that that why keeps you going because yeah. things will frustrate you. Um, I call Ghana organized chaos, a beautiful disaster. <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get yeah, on any true. given day, yeah. but you wake up every day, like you get to reset. And that's yeah. what I love about this place. When I ask you, when I when I say December, mention the country that comes into your mind first, December? Ghana, all December. day. December? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So December, Ghana, what, what is the link yeah. between the diaspora and tourism in Ghana? Because it looks like in December, everybody wants to come to Ghana. Antoine, yeah. tell us, what do, you think that, what do you think is a direct link or what do you think, what is it that people, that, that, that pushes people to want to come to Ghana? every time in December I think first off it's the it's the weather over there during that time okay like, it, it gets cold so, so it's, the weather uh, sucks there man exactly so the <laughs> weather like is it. one and two people people who started you know coming really early and, and big ups people like DJ Mensa who started this whole Aquaba UK thing yeah. going on so there was always a party to you know to go to yeah, there was to always to, some yeah. event tour to take part mm-hmm. in and then eventually, I mean, social media, Snapchat worked a lot because people over there in the diaspora would go on Snapchat and yeah. see a few What's of their friends here exactly. chilling yeah. every, yeah. every yeah. day. Some, like, some, somewhere last day, I had yeah. people actually who, who didn't plan to come to Ghana. They saw what was going on in yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a reality show <laughs> yeah. on Snapchat. Trust me. So, I mean, given that, then then you say, you know what, let me book my ticket early then. Yeah. And then it, it's word of mouth. I mean, if, if I came this year and I had a lot of fun, the next time I'm bringing like five, six, mm. seven of my friends like she yeah. did. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think that's what really worked and then eventually you know you know, big organizations you know the Afrochella boys you know mm-hmm. Abdul and Co said you know what let's do Afrochella and yeah. that was huge and and I think Ghanaians working in certain positions in the diaspora as well just also latched on that so mm-hmm. you had executives who who are you know people from Twitter to YouTube to Apple Music also taking advantage of the scenes yeah. and coming yeah. down so it, it was a domino effect yeah. I think yeah. in as much as people are here to have fun it looks like there are a lot of people who are also business minded people are trying to connect people are trying yeah. to form some business partnerships and all that so I mean what do you think are the the industries that people could actually associate themselves with while in Ghana so it's not just about you chilling, but then you could also establish one or two networks. Yeah. Right, right, because we have to build the economy. I would say that I, absolutely IT with all the digitization um, efforts that are going on, real estate for sure, um, definitely the sports and entertainment industry, and then agriculture. Um, I think those are the top ones that I can think of. Okay. That those are the top ones that come to mind. Mm. I think that there's room and opportunity in all those areas okay. to bring that knowledge from abroad and mm-hmm. then kind of merge it with 
the local um, resources yeah. here. This is, this is my final question for this segment. I want to ask you, I want to ask you, what is your take on uh, customer service in Ghana? <laughs> I don't want to ask my people because we, we, may, we may sound in the same line. Yeah, so I want to ask yeah. you, what is your take on customer service it in Ghana? Doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Um, eh? There is an essence to customer service that I feel like we're missing here. Okay. Like when you go to the Caribbean, there's like this is what their cult their economy is built off of. Yeah. How you leave here, like will you know that that lasting memory is what will bring you back. Mm. You know, and I feel like when you go when you go into Ghanaian home, everyone is so kind. Here's your water on the tray. Do you want soda, Fanta? Plantain chips, and then when you get uh -huh. into the restaurants or you get into the businesses, it's like everybody's you're a boss. Bother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it's like. I didn't even want to work today. You're bothering me. Like, you want to return that? No. It's like, mm -hmm. that might come out of my paycheck, so you have to eat exactly. that. Exactly. Um, I think the, <laughs> the consequences aren't really enforced here. Like, you you know when, when you, you travel, you're working at a restaurant and mm -hmm. the customer isn't happy. It's your job on it's the line. It's your job on the line. Yeah, exactly. It's a, lo a lawsuit yeah. that yeah. might be paid That's true. Right. That's true. But, you know, here it's like, ah, yeah, whatever. Like, mm, whatever. Probably go, go anything happens. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can we actually yeah. go and write reviews? Something like that. So, it's... <laughs> So, but I think some of the businesses that are popping and cropping up little are, are really understanding it. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so we have, we still have a long way to go. That yeah, I will admit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still on connecting the diaspora to Ghana, and we're talking about the year of return. We're going to take a quick breather. When we're back. We're talking about sports and education. It's still connecting the diaspora to Ghana, and we'll be back. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is still the All Star Game Show, and we are talking about connecting the diaspora to Ghana. And now we move into sports and education. The face of Team Ghana. Tell us the link or the connection or the impact, uh, um, the impact of the diaspora on the Ghana basketball. Right. Um, so um, I think that the, the the diaspora has more exposure to the sport. They they are more exposed to attention to the details of the sport. You know, basketball is a very tactical game. There's a lot that goes into it that we need to understand in order to play the game the right way and on a high level. Um, and these people have been exposed to those, those um, details. So I think that once they come down, they can impact or like share whatever they've learned with us over here. And kids need to learn the basic fundamentals of the game. And then once they play consistently, they keep learning, they keep getting better. Um, guys like Kojo Afari, Brian Owusu have already started like basketball clinics and camps over here. And I think that's an amazing, amazing thing they're doing. Um, I encourage more guys to come down, have these camps and stuff to make sure that kids know more about the game. You know, kids um, get access to good coaching personnel, good skilled coaching personnel, which is what is going to help them take their game to the next level. So um, I think that the, the diaspora definitely plays a huge role when it comes to development of sports and basketball in Ghana. Okay. Yeah. So there's a talk of the All-Africa Games in 2023. Right. So with the event that's going to happen this year, that's the Ghana Diaspora All-Star Games, yeah. is it more like a build-up to the main event on, on uh, in two years? Um, I, you could say that because um, what we intend to do is we're trying to make sure that we can market our events very well okay. um, because we believe that we're in the age of digital marketing. Yeah. We're in the age of social media. Yeah. So you can't just get up and say, I'm going to go do a basketball game and it's yeah. just basketball. You know, okay. There has to be a build-up to it. Yeah. You need to prep the people. You need to make them want to be at the event. You need mm -hmm. to make them... It needs to be an experience, you know. So um, I think now what we're doing is just going to set the pace for whoever okay. else is doing basketball okay. just to pay attention to these details and whatever they do. And I think that that's how Ghana basketball is going to move forward okay. because we're going to draw attention, yeah. you know, and that's, that's what will create the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's what will let the government say, I see what you guys are doing. I think it's worth investing yeah. into. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to come back to the question on youth developments, like what the link of, of diaspora to the youth development is. But Irene, I want to ask you, what's the recruitment system like in, in, in back in back in the States? Like college basketball, high school basketball, how's it like, what's the system like? You know, there are people who are drafted in high school, there are people yeah. who are drafted in yeah. college. How does it work for people there? Like that? Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, but um, I know that... At a young age, a lot of kids are in AAU, which is like outside of even their school teams. Mm -hmm. It's like they get opportunity to travel across the country playing very competitive basketball mm -hmm. um, at young ages. I mean, from like 
10, 12, um, all the way through their teen years mm -hmm. um, before. So a lot of the kids that you see that end up making it to the league, they played in AU, mm -hmm. they played in academies and all of that. And so scouts go look at them at okay. those um, at those um, tournaments and they get to see who the best of the best is. Okay. A lot of the people who make it to the NBA knew each other even before yeah, they yeah. made it to the league. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, if you don't get recruited, I know there was a time where, you know, you could be recruited from high school and then they stopped mm -hmm. that and then, you know, went back to it. But um, if you didn't go that route from high school to the NBA, for example, you could go through the college route. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, went to a basketball school, went to University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Tar Heels all day. <laughs> um, and, you know, some of my good friends, like one of my really good friends actually um, came from a small state, Iowa. There's mm -hmm. not that many black people there. Um, it's like very country, Midwestern state. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, went to UNC, Chapel Hill, as did others and made it to the league got drafted um, I believe number seventh pick by Golden State Warriors mm, okay and then went to play with Dallas Mavericks and then um, is now with the Kings so shout out to Harrison Barnes shout out H um, and so getting that opportunity coming from a small town mm -hmm. to make it to the league I mean there's a process if you work hard if you have the right people looking at you mm -hmm. the right recruits um, you can definitely make it okay yeah okay. So now we're talking about youth development. What, 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 what is the link between the, youth, uh, the diaspora and the youth development in terms of scholarships, in terms of collaboration, business networks, mentorship, the mentorship program and all that? How, how are the youth going to develop from the, the impact of the diaspora? Okay. Um, so I believe that the diaspora will play a huge role in the development of sports in Ghana mm -hmm. because obviously I said that they have the exposure to those things. Yeah. Um, so I think that once they can come and impact whatever they've learned mm -hmm. to us over here is going to help us because then we also acquire that knowledge and we train and we teach mm -hmm. the younger generation. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, once you start teaching them from a young age, it becomes a part of them. That's true. You know, it, be, it becomes easy and consistently, once there's a lot, of, a lot more basketball games, we don't play enough basketball games in Ghana, you know, yeah, so yeah. we want to have tournaments, we want to have clinics. All these things is what's going to promote the sport is what's going to draw the attention mm -hmm. of whoever wants to invest in sports in Ghana. And I think that sports is a very huge industry, mm -hmm. very lucrative. We just need to take advantage of the opportunity mm -hmm. and make sure that we're not doing it just by ourselves, but we have Ghanaians in the diaspora who also want to do things mm -hmm. back home. Yeah. People who love the game of basketball, we should connect, you yeah. know, and just work towards promoting basketball and putting Ghana on the map when it yeah. comes to basketball. Okay. Yeah. So, Antoine, growing up in typical Ghana, you cannot prioritize sports. You have to, you have to prioritize education. Yeah. What do you think we could address on such an issue? Don't you think there's a way we could merge it? Don't you think there's a way we could yeah. go about it? Other than letting people understand that you have to like finish with school before you come and attend to sports. <coughs> and obviously, by the time you're done with school, you, you, you may not have the strength or the capacity yeah. Yeah. to continue with catch sports. Up with you Age well, will catch up so with yeah. you and all that. What do you think needs to be addressed when it comes think, to this issue? I think issue? first off is the aftermath because anybody who's, who's, who's like grown up um, you know, doing school in Ghana, it's pretty much a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have, you got these into school sports on a secondary level, yeah. even on, on the university level. It's yeah. very competitive. It's a mm -hmm. big deal. Like I have so many names in my head and people that I knew. Basketball was a highlight for me, yeah. um, you know, schooling. The, the problem is after school, or what's the transition, you know, from, from you know, tertiary type basketball mm -hmm. to playing for your community-based competitions and then on a national level. Yeah. And I think that's where branding and packaging, you know, plays a huge role. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you ask anybody who loves basketball in Ghana, they'll always, they'll, they'll, they'll tra trace it back to, you know, one name, you know, from yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Particular name, basketball yeah. after playing, you know, the, what, what was it called? Nintendo 64? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, NBA, Nintendo 64, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And it was Kobe Bryant and David mm -hmm. Robinson. They're all his names because yeah, yeah, it was yeah, packaged yeah. right. No then you had documentaries. Names. I remember watching, mm -hmm. watching this Michael Jordan before the one on Netflix. There was yeah. this one that was mm -hmm. on cassette tape. I, I think remember it was watching okay. Come Fly With Me. It was over and okay. over and okay. over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And jump, man. So they made basketball so attractive. It was mm -hmm. a lifestyle. And I think that that's what we... That's what we lack, or we lack even now yeah. mm -hmm. on that side. And, and it, it's heavy on the players. Like yeah. a lot of people fall in love with the players both on and off court. So okay. the Ghanaian players who, who they finish tertiary basketball, I mean, PK yourself, right. making sure you represent and you make it attractive mm. to, you know, the next young player in, yeah. in university or even primary school is mm. very important. Yeah. And then on a more national and organizational level, I mean, what you're doing with this podcast is amazing. You know, just yeah. showing that, 
it's organized mm. and there's a vision with it and we're right. going there's a direction. direction then like you said earlier the government just latches on to that yeah. and you know they, they, they make the most of it and then however else we can support we do yeah. that um, I don't know if you know Coach Isaac Kwapo yeah, yeah, Jr. Yeah, that's, that's, Imp- Impact who, Youth that's who exposed me to f- my like my first yes. ever organized basketball game. And he's okay. doing amazing. Yeah. I remember in large May he up, brought up, Coach Isaac. Uh, Imani McGee came down in May, yeah, the yeah, WNBA yeah, player. Yeah. They did, you know, sports camp. So packaging it right, mm-hmm. branding it right, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. Giving, giving it a right story is key. Yeah, true. It's, it's very so we're still talking on connecting the diaspora to Ghana and right after this breather, we are going to zone into the creative industry, the impact of the diaspora on the creative industry. Do stay tuned. Smell like well, she like my fragrance. <laughs> You're still logged in on the All-Star Game Show, and as I said, we are connecting the diaspora to Ghana. Now we're talking the creative industry. The creative industry has every manner of people in there. We have the musicians, we have the filmmakers, we have entrepreneurs, we have everybody there. What is the impact of the diaspora on the creative industry? Let's talk about the music industry in, in particular. Right. Um, right now, music is big. It's, it's yeah. a very big industry. Um, and I think that Ghanaians are, are slowly tapping into that. Um, we, we're putting out good songs. Mm-hmm. Afrobeat is a big thing right big now. Thing, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's more so the music coming to us now. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. there's people who are coming to Ghana just to come shoot mu- music videos That's with true. Ghanaian That's artists. True. Like I saw Hedy One in so Ghana, that. Jay has been in Ghana. Mm-hmm. And that was never a thing, you know. Yeah, so we can see that it's gradually it's getting gradually. to a point where mm-hmm. what we're doing is, is being um, appreciated, appreciated by people yeah. in the diaspora and mm-hmm. them as well coming on board is opportunities for us exactly. over there, yeah. you know, because then they have the audience from their side mm-hmm. and then we have the music from here as well. You can also tap into well. the market that it's, way. It's, it's mm-hmm. just great, you know. So mm-hmm. I think that Ghanaian artists just need to keep putting in the work. There's definitely opportunities going to come because mm-hmm. once you keep working, once you keep put, putting out good the music, are gonna come. there's people coming to Ghana every, every December. Time, yeah. You literally don't know who you bump into. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. True. that's true. Yeah. On the Oxford Street, you mm-hmm. know, so... And once you have work, you have something to show. Yeah. So I think that is 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 in a step in the right I direction. Mean, what's what's the reception of Ghanaian artists back there? Like how how, how is it? What's the, the the noise about it? How, what's it all about? The reception about the reception of Ghanaian artists back there. I would say folks are on the you know on the bandwagon. They love it. Like mm. everyone is like you know when Beyonce came out um, with her album and she had Shatawali on there already. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it was major. Like people were like, did she shoot that in Africa? Yeah. Was she like <laughs> everyone wanted to know? Like yeah. and um, you know and shout out to like people coming together to do you know collaborations with. Um, with artists from abroad because it's like showing that we have a lot to offer to the mm-hmm. music industry. Yeah. Um, I would say the reception has um, been great over the last five, six, seven years, okay. especially okay. Um, with Afrobeats culture just growing in the States overall. Mm. Um, you see that now when, um, you know, artists go abroad, whether Stoneboy or, who you know, Shatawale mm-hmm. or anybody, you can see that people, Kwesi Arthur, the shows are sold out in mm-hmm. minutes. Um, yeah. You know, like within hours, the shows are sold mm-hmm. out. Everything like, sold out, and yeah. packed. Like people are ready and excited to mm-hmm. see their Ghanaian mm-hmm. artists yeah. on the um, on the continent. Yeah. So from the continent coming to the States or, mm-hmm. you know, wherever. So I think it's a good time and we should just capitalize off of that. Just like okay. BK said, mm-hmm. like, Create the content. You know, they're waiting for the next hit for the summer. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. You know, they're waiting for the December jams yeah. so that when they come, they can sing every lyric, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. I think we just have to keep putting good content out yeah. and people will um, absorb it. Okay. Antoine, you have been speaking to um, uh, top names, big names from all around the world. What What is your take on what do you think about Ghana, Ghana as a whole? I yeah. mean, the, the, the creative industry in Ghana. What yeah. do they think? Do they think like that there's a potential in it? If we invest in it, it's going to go far. What, what do they think about the, the creative industry in Ghana? Yeah, definitely relevant. I think that's the key word. That Ghana's creative industry has become a lot more relevant than it used to be, okay. uh, especially its position in Africa. You've cemented that. And I think everybody's played a solid role in that. Um, I mean, she mentioned Shatawale being on Beyonce's album. Mm-hmm. Uh, even on, on a producer's level, we had Guilty Beats contributing to two yeah. songs on that. Um, you know, the events industry and the promoters, you know, Abdul and the rest of the Afrochella crew did their mm-hmm. bit to make sure that, you know, the music ecosystem was represented on the ground as exactly. well with festivals. Right, right. 
Um, and yeah, Twitter saying, you know, we're opening our headquarters mm. here in Ghana mm-hmm. is pretty huge as well. YouTube music coming down, um, all these streaming services, you know, allocating huge budgets to marketing in, okay. in Ghana. And not, you know, not to end it there, you've got Nigerian artists, artists from South Africa, bigging up the ecosystem in Ghana, just the vibe mm. in Ghana, the reception as the point of inspiration for the music they do and what they do from Burner Boy to Whiskid. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the message is Ghana is relevant Ghana in, is in relevant. that space and yeah. it can only go up from there. I'm going to take um, all your opinions on this particular yeah. question. There's, there's, there's this thing that is going on where it looks like we are trying to adapt the Western culture and we are trying to forget our own culture. What is your take on it? What do you think should be done? Because it looks like people are losing it. And then there's a new generation that's going to come. Are they going yeah. to become full-time Westerners or they're, going to, they're, go, they're still going to have the cultural values? I'll take everyone's opinion. Let yeah. me start with you. Um, I think for me, culture is a way of life. Yeah. And as Ghanaians, we have our culture. Yeah. That's how we grew up. That's mm-hmm. what we know. Yeah. And no matter how, how much you think that you're Western mm-hmm. or you're no matter how much you think you know just based off mm-hmm. looking on your Instagram and stuff like that, you need to know your roots. And you don't... You can't just... Ignore it, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that it should be a blend of whatever you're seeing out there um, plus whatever we know over here. Yeah. You don't go overboard and try to act like you're American. Or you true. don't go overboard and that's do true. stuff that you know we don't do in we Ghana. Do, yeah. you know? yeah. That's just not part of what we we, we are accustomed to. That's true. Um, so for me, I think that it's okay to, to learn. It's okay to see... Um, things that you like and want to do it, but I think that it should be a blend. There should okay. be a balance, okay. you know? I mean, what about you? The Ghanaians that you know all around the world, do you think they, they, they've let go of their cultural values and then they've just adopted whatever they're, 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 they're seeing or whatever they're, they're used to now? Yeah, I would say that because Ghanaians are such adaptable people and such kind people, we take in other people's cultures very easily. Mm-hmm. You could find that in the States. There's some people who are Ghanaian. You wouldn't know they were Ghanaian unless you knew their name. <laughs> sure. You know, Nana, Kwame. You're like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but, like, if they just said their English name, you would just mm-hmm. think they're black yeah, American. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I feel like, um, like, I see, I'll just speak on Nigeria, for example. I feel like the Nigerians really keep their culture. Yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah. Ghanaians, we're just like, okay, I'm American now. You know, yeah, like, yeah, it's so we just fine. Let it go. Yeah, and huh? I think we need to, like, not lose that. As a fellow American, mm. um, I would like to say that, um, you know, I wish that, you know, there's, you know, I don't speak as fluently or I don't speak well at all, actually, if I'm being honest. And I wish I didn't lose my language, you know, trying to adapt. Like yeah. back then, we were being called African booty scratchers, you know, you, wanted, you didn't want to be African. You yeah. wanted to be just black American, mm-hmm. you know. And so now it's like, no, I'm African. I need mm-hmm. to own that. And like yeah. people love Ghana. If you hear of the top countries that people want to visit when mm-hmm. they're talking about African mm-hmm. Country, Ghana is top two, yeah. if not top one, <laughs> you know, and so like we need to own that and keep the culture when you're uh, we need to like speak the language, take the food there and like mm-hmm. improvise. There's nothing improvise, wrong with yeah. blending cultures, That's but true. I feel like sometimes we let go of our culture too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there's a shift. Yeah. There's yeah. a shift now yeah. for sure. Anton, do you yeah. think we've lost it? Because even people we look up to back here in Ghana, yeah. have, there are some people who have, I mean, associated themselves with the customs of, of the Westerners and then they've also let go. So do you think we've lost it? Do you think there's a, there's a way out of it? Because yeah. at this rate, if it continues this way, it looks like the new generation yeah, are going yeah, to come are going to be f- full-time <laughs> Westerners. They're not going to know anything Ghanaian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, like she said, I think that there's a shift. It, it has seemed a bit like we've lost it because I remember... Um, you know, when I was younger, I have an older brother, Michael, who's, who's still in New York. And, and you know, both him, not only him, but other friends and his friends, you know, the goal was to get to America. Yeah, yeah America. exactly. He had American flags yeah. and stuff. But there's been a shift and it's because, you know, we started doing things in, in a cool way, in a yeah, fashionable way. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the shift is the, 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 I wouldn't say gatekeepers, but those who play a certain role, the fashion designers, mm-hmm. You know the musicians, even the Comerica boys. After yeah. doing the whole yeah. Comerica yeah. thing, they started putting a shanty yeah. symbol. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They and they started the putting yeah. thing. Yeah, that video. Yeah. So they yeah. listen. You're like, no, mm-hmm. listen. Even though you're getting, you know, cover of Rolling Stone mm-hmm. and stuff, you need to stay original. And, stories, and then no, yeah. they listened to that and started adding elements of their exactly. culture to it. Exactly. I mean, I stopped wearing ball caps with NY on it when mm-hmm. I discovered a Ghanaian mm-hmm. fashion yeah. design. Yeah. 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 Exactly. With, yeah. You know that the symbol, the local symbols, yeah. And it's cool. It's a great quality. So I think. Once all these things are done, we we have the answers to it. If it's a T-shirt I want to wear, yeah. and I, I I want it to be a Nike T-shirt, mm-hmm. and then there's a Ghanaian brand that's as cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I'll go for yeah. it. So I think yeah. all those elements count. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. packaging the food right. 
Exactly. You know, True. How, how are we going to support our own? Because it looks like it's more of hearsay. We, we normally talk about it, but we don't show yeah. the action. Yeah. We, we, we like to talk about, no, support your own, support your own, but we don't really do. What's the, what's the way forward with support your own? That phrase, support your own, PK, tell us. Well, I think that is, is for me, you, I don't know. I, to me, it comes natural. You know, okay. um, my guys, Jude, who's Tribe of God, yeah, um, yeah. they're doing an incredible job when it comes mm-hmm. to fashion. I mm-hmm. love fashion. Yeah. So when I see good things, I see it. Yes. And I think that there's great potential in what they're doing. Yeah. So that like nobody will come and tell me to support them. Exactly. Like, mm. I didn't get a personal invite to the pop-up, but exactly. I was there. You were there, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. That's what we need to be doing mm-hmm. for each other. Mm-hmm. And that's how we're gonna put Ghana on the map. That's mm-hmm. how we're gonna be up, up, up there. So I mean, we just need to support our own. We just need yeah. to support yeah. our own. Any final words from you, Irene? I would say, yeah, just keep doing what we're doing. I think we're on a good trajectory. We just have to keep the energy. Yeah. Um, I don't see Ghana going anywhere. Um, we have one of the growing, mm-hmm. fastest growing economies in the world. Yeah. Um, I just see that it's only going to get better. As long as we have something here that people can come look forward to mm-hmm. and we stay connected, it's it's going to be great things ahead. Yeah. Antoine, you have some I mean, final words? It's, it's uh. just keep going. I mean, like he said, support your own, mm-hmm. purchase the products, but also for those who are producing, you know, the services and, and the goods, the products, let's, let's match the standard, let's right. match the quality. Right. So th- nobody will have an excuse not to support that. Exactly. Own, you know? True. Um, yeah. A lot of the youth today are into entrepreneurship. We have lots of people who have online businesses, lots of people who have stands, lots of people who are making sales online and all that. What, what, what has pushed us into this phase? What Irene talked to us. What do you think has pushed us into the phase of everybody wanting to own their business, everybody wanting to be their own boss and then try to make sales online and all that? I think it's because the formula works. Like people have seen, especially with the growth of social media, you don't have to set up a brick and mortar. You can Mm -hmm. literally be selling clothes, selling whatever, Mm -hmm. spices from your house. And I think seeing other people um, across the world become millionaires Mm -hmm. or become, you know, um, very wealthy off of just selling products on Mm -hmm. um, social media, Mm -hmm. on Instagram, you know, on Facebook. I think it's encouraging to people and it kind of breaks that barrier of I have to do X, Y, Z in order to be a business person. It's like, I just actually have to have an idea, a concept and a process and market it. And then I can get customers. Antoine, so obviously there's no structure in place for these online businesses to be multimillionaires. So what do you think needs to be done? Because it looks like when somebody starts a business and then a fellow sees that this is what the person has started, they they also want to just join it. Exactly. So saturation is a thing in Ghana. What what, what do you think? Is there a structure that should be put in place that's going to help these people to be able to become multimillionaires? Because whatever they are selling Mm. has potential. Exactly. But it looks like they start something, stop, go and start another thing. What what, what really goes on in that? an interesting stat that said a lot of the people a lot of the young people who, who start businesses register them as sole, sole proprietorships yeah. mm-hmm. it's just it's just them so yeah. it starts with them and it ends with them so okay. just a lot more enlightenment letting them know that collaboration is the way to go right. I mean if, if you started a fashion line and I'm interested in fashion there's something else I could contribute I could be your, your business development yeah. consultant okay. I could yeah. be the graphic designer I could be the creative director so a lot more of that like in, in, in investment as well so not mm-hmm. only invest in cash but those type okay. of resources Personally, I feel like if, if we're able to understand, as you're saying, understanding the assignment, because yeah. mm-hmm. we could come together and then set up something, I'll be the head. This, but everybody has their exactly. department. But it looks yeah. like, as you're saying, everybody yeah. wants to register yeah. the yeah. thing yeah. and then be their own yeah. boss. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the so it looks like you have to, so, so we have to work on the fact that everybody's trying to be their own boss right. and then actually establish some connections so that we can, we, we can, we can yeah. sustain businesses, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, then, then that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go into the movie industry. Yes, man. Let, let, let's not be biased. Now we have questions for you. Let's not be biased. Okay. What um, question, so one. I think I think for me it's more so uh, I have two questions. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll ask you about what you think the role of the diaspora will, will do to the movie industry okay. in Ghana mm-hmm. as to um, yeah taking it to a different level. Okay. Yeah, that's the first one. The, the 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 answer to that question is we we have a lot of potential in Ghana. We have a lot of good actors in Ghana, yeah. but then they're they're not going through the right channels. So obviously people from the diaspora are going to they're going to be a link a link to like their breakthroughs and all that. Yeah. I've 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 worked with people who have done short films with people outside and all that, but they don't really make much noise about it yeah. because the the diaspora and the film the the movie industry has not really found its ground. So yeah. they don't really want to make noise about it. So it looks like. There, there, there needs to be something in place that's going to get people, do you understand, to yeah. be connecting with the, the, the yeah. aspirant people yeah. and then do, do, do a couple of films, a couple of projects and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so the second thing is, um, how do you feel when people make that comparison between the Ghanaian movie industry and the Nigerian movie industry? And mm. 
will you will you will you like just move to go be in the, the Nigerian industry because it's a bigger industry or mm-hmm. you take that huge chip on your shoulder and say no I'm Ghanaian yeah. I want to make an impact in the Ghanaian movie industry yeah. and I, make I, things I, different I think I had a private conversation with you last time we were talking about a good name yeah. so in wanting a good name obviously I'd like to take the burden on myself and yeah. see how best we can you get can the, the Ghana that. film industry that, that, there's a lot of potential there are mm-hmm. a lot of good writers there are a lot yeah. of good directors but then again the the, act, the, the right channel yeah. for them to bring out their craft is not there right. so we, we, we have to connect we have to sit down and put our minds together, together. sometimes mm-hmm. so, so somebody may have have something you may want the person to bring this on board the person to, no i don't think i can do this i yeah, can do that yeah. so it looks like we're not really connecting with the right people mm-hmm. but the people are around so we just have to keep going on to get the right people keep we can work with involved. and then because I've, I've i've done a film with somebody we submitted it for uh, a film festival in yeah. france and then it's, it's doing well yeah it's, it's doing yeah, well so that's, that's what i'm saying the potential is there you just mm-hmm. need to we, we just need to be ready to work yeah we need yeah. to be ready to work. together we, as well we are looking yeah. we are looking for the easiest way to way to, to achieve it, it. Yeah. but then it's not done that way we are, yeah. we are going to make several films where they're not going to go the way we want to we have to reshoot we have to do all these things but right. the question is how many people are ready to go to that mile yeah. 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 So, some yeah. people just give up after one or two tries yeah. and then they yeah. let go yeah. and all that yeah so for the film industry it's a, it's a whole thing on its own but we're still in investing in and and marketing is also you know a thing because yeah. i was at this uh the accra indie film fest and i saw these mm-hmm. incredible short films man yeah. beautiful mm-hmm. movies they, no, they deserve made, to made be by yeah, yeah. Made, yeah. Yeah. some okay. tidy mm-hmm. boys and it's just groups and they are talented exactly yeah. the standard is it's there yeah. and then you, you 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 engage them and you talk to them and they tell you funding is an issue you know yeah. marketing you know, but previously we used to we used to focus on the cinemas yeah, yeah. although we don't have lots of cinemas in ghana yeah. that used to be the priority but now everybody has come to understand that the cinema should actually be the last point of call mm-hmm. you need yeah. to submit your films to all these platforms yeah. make sure your films out your film is making the noise it's supposed to make it's generating yeah. the revenue before it's you can come to cinemas because cinema. yeah. if you make your film and you target cinemas first you're going to run out of yeah. users yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you, you you could give up you understand you could give up with that. Lately. everybody's yeah. busy you understand and now you know everybody's trying to do these streaming platforms mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everybody's coming up with these streaming platforms where you put your project there you just go and pay one or two yeah, yeah. small money and then you can you can yeah. watch the films and all yeah. that so it's changing yeah the, the the industry is changing it's going to get to a point where just two people can just pick up their things and go and start shooting we don't need a whole yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like we were, we're trying to make the work easy. Yeah. You set up the camera, I direct. That person is acting. We're good to go. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. yeah, but we are trying to make it easy. Although it's not yeah. easy, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a gradual process. Yeah. Well, what would you say to some of the young people who are trying to break through in the industry? Like, what are what's some advice you have for it's, them? It's 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 basically consistency. Yeah. I think consistency cuts through in everything. If mm-hmm. if you're not consistent, you're you're not going to see results. If you're not consistent, you're not going to learn. Because yeah. I was telling him that I I I normally don't like my performances. Anytime yeah. I see a performance, yeah. I, I, yeah. it just asks me. I if I see myself on TV, I can understand. If if I see myself on TV, I'm like, nah, Charlie, I could have really? done it better and yeah. all that. So. Mentally, I'm challenging myself. I'm right, like, no, I could going. do it better. Yeah. Then the next time I'll do it yeah. better. And, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. helping, you yeah. know, it's, it's helping gradually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're getting there. Very soon, I'm going to write films and I'm going to cast you guys. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're good yeah. to go. Smell like she like my fragrance. So before we're out of here, I'd like to take your right. final words on the build-up to this year's All-Star Game. Mr. Basketball, Team Ghana, tell us, <laughs> g- give us the information we need to know. Yeah. Give us the dates, the venue, everything that people need to know in connection with the All-Star Basketball yeah. Game. Just tell um, us a few. All-Star Game is happening 26 December this year um, at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I urge everybody to come to... It's going to be a movie. I said it on the earlier yeah. episode. We're going to make history and you can't not be a part of it. Okay. You know, you want to be there and say, oh, I was there when mm-hmm. it happened. So um, I urge everybody to get their tickets. Once tickets are out, you see on our social media yeah. platforms, invite your friends, and let's make history. Can you me, mention the social media handles? Um, Ghana Diaspora All Star Game okay. on all social okay, media. On all social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, platforms. I mean, how many people have you invited? How many people are coming? I've been people. telling people. I've okay. been telling everybody that I meet. Um, it's going to be an experience. I mm-hmm. think that as we segue into making Ghana um, basketball more of a thing, yeah. this will be like one of those pivotal times that people mm-hmm. remember. I remember when I saw that, you know, young recruit and mm-hmm. he was doing so well. Yeah. Now he's in the league. Like, yeah. you just just come through and see the talent that we have um, in Ghana and yeah. it will be something that everyone looks forward to every year. It's going to yeah. be like a stamp on the December event. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly. It's just going to be official. Exactly. So please come through, come support and then it's not going anywhere. Sure. So, 
Let's build. Yeah, Antoine, what are you expecting? What what, what what should people expect from what what should people expect from you? And then what are you also expecting on that day? Because I mean, we want to see you. I'm definitely gonna be there. That for sure. Yeah. Um, I guarantee I'm gonna be talking about it a lot and sharing okay. whatever we post on a social media platform. Mm-hmm. So yeah. do follow. Um, but I hear a lot of the hotels in Ghana are already fully booked for December. <laughs> oh, wow. So what I'm getting yeah, is actually a thing, like a lot yeah. of our books. So I would say is if, if you are coming to Ghana, just make sure that um, the All-Star Games is just one of the events that you are to going be to be. Yeah. Just mark it down the 26th of December. You need to be there. So you heard it from Antoine that if you're coming to Ghana this festive on the 26th of December, Boxing Day, you need to have the All-Star Game as one of your plans. Mm-hmm. This is the All-Star Game show. We're going to come your way next time with the next episode. That's the Players Only episode. My name is Aaron Adachi. Don't blink. Smell like well, she like my fragrance. Ooh. It's going down, ayy Send a bottle of John, but sit at your table and pass it around, ayy This is a hit, I got Sarko there back on the mound I used to ride on them bus, then I got it bustin', just look at me now yeah. I feel like the man when I'm in that crowd, we they runnin' the town Bosu was had and Jolu was craggin', Nima was braggin' I might pull up in Burma with all of the sticks, you think I was campin' Me and them died in the M.6, we speed it, we mashin', yeah